Can I really do a better job at every single person's job at this company? All the people I've hired specifically to do certain jobs, can I do a better job of what they're doing than they can? Of course, of course I can, but that's not the point. That doesn't scale. So here I was on a meditative hike and I realized, boom, I'm eating an apple, I'm drinking water, I have some cheddar cheese, Femto management. It was that obvious. Femto management is more than just an opportunity. It's a leap forward in business thinking. Micro is the Greek prefix for one one million. We all know that. Femto is the Greek prefix for one one quadrillion. So Femto gets you the level of precision at the atomic layer, at the atomic level of exactly what you want to manage. One millionth doesn't get you anything. It doesn't buy you a dime of innovation. It doesn't buy you a dime of leadership. One quadrillionth is a gold mine. That's Femto. Called Femto Management. It takes micromanagement techniques to an extreme level. It's the biggest management framework of all time. That has become a global phenomenon. I don't think we think about anything the same anymore. Take a look. What's hot? Femto hats. Femto behavior. Femto marketing. Femto texting. Femto service. Femto apps. Femto hotel rooms are rented by the foot. Femto. 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 How about a cold Femto brew? I just invested in a company. I live in Noe Valley and I want to be a dancer.com. Throw away your Hadoop cluster. We can really meet the needs of people who live in Noe Valley and want to be a dancer. If we had to compare him to somebody, I definitely would compare him to Steve Jobs. Uh, Richard Branson. Um, maybe Mick Jagger. I think Elon Musk. Definitely like the Dalai Lama. Antonio Banderas, of course. We're right behind him here on uh, Route 99. This is going to rock the TED conference. Whoa! TED. Technology. Entertain design. Diagrams. Counterintuition changes the game. Makes Femto look micro. It's a good line. Yeah. I hope you use that line, guys. I won't say that these were really my ideas. My ideas? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Michael Furtick. Get to know an expert in your chosen field and ignore everything he has to say. You pay your customers to be your customers. If you cannot find a problem, create a problem. Does that sound like a terrible idea that could not possibly work? You bet it does. Welcome to the world of CI. Thank you. I have had to learn how to navigate uh, a new reality. It's been important to me not to let it change who I am and how I live. There's no need for, you know, more planes in my life or more servants. Have I soared too high, like Icarus? Am I more properly analogized to a different character from Greek mythology? It changes your life right when you have a massive phenomenon like this happen because people around you are asking what's next and that creates a distance and isolation between you and some of the best friends you've had. Well, you know, I've encouraged Michael to get out there and develop this kind of trusted relationship with, with other board members as well. Oh, hey, hey Mike. Up, Michael? How are you doing? Hey. Well, yeah. I'm really glad you came to the show. That's no excuse for him inviting Mike Maples to his daily show appearance instead of me. That was just complete See you later. All Good, right, buddy. thanks. Yeah. I'll see you after the show. Okay. okay.
Do you regret inviting us to make this documentary? I don't know. I mean, I could ask you the same question. No, oh, I don't regret it at all. Exactly. Why would you? Neither do I. Although I don't really see the point of anybody watching it. You don't think anybody would be interested? Well, there's no accounting for taste. Could appeal to a fringe audience, you know, for the wrong reasons. From our studios in New York City, this is Hobie Hill. Michael Fertig is here. As you know, he is probably Silicon Valley's most intoxicating innovator. He's been a guest on this show many times, and I am pleased to have you back here again. Welcome. Thank you, Hobie. You were, as many of the prominent public figures in your business community of Silicon Valley, a supporter of Hillary Clinton. And yet you not only predicted the victory of her opponent, Donald Trump, but are credited by many with introducing him to the intellectual blueprint that led to his improbable victory. I'm talking, of course, about CI, or counterintuition, the highly influential anti-statistical solution matrix. We all know what intuition is. It's the sense we get that we know what should or will happen next. When we come across an intuitive solution, our natural reaction is, hey, I get it, that makes sense. This is now completely irrelevant. When we see an innovative solution today, our natural response should be, how can that possibly be true? This makes no sense. Well, your 2015 TED Talk, by any terrestrial standards, was a star-studded event. Uh, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Janet Yellen, Yeezy, Elizabeth Warren, Wayne Gretzky, Lena Dunham, Malala Yousafzai, Vladimir Putin, and Donald Trump. Did the two of you speak? We did, briefly. What was that conversation like? He came up after the talk, he complimented me. Uh, he asked me if I play golf, I said no. He asked, are you a Jew? I said yes. Warren, that is nice of you to say, thank you. But you know, Michael and I don't really think of it as changing how the world thinks. It's more like we've changed how the world changes. I really think we should focus on the fact that David was the one BC who stood publicly by Michael. Yeah, even right. though it went against every principle. That's leadership. Guys, you're making it way too complicated. Just focus your calls on the fact that Michael was the only one who saw the Trump thing coming and David was the only one there watching him see it coming from the beginning. In your now famous TED Talk on counterintuition, you said the next wave of innovative ideas would make no sense. Now, less than a year later, we have the most senseless election in U.S. history. How, how is it that you, of all the people in Silicon Valley, you're the only one who saw the rise of Donald Trump coming? You know, Joe, I'm getting that question a lot, but of course the real question is how could CI not have foreseen Donald Trump? Uh, a lot of people are still imagining that counter intuition CI is just a business predictive model or strategy. It's not. Of course, it's an entire thought matrix. And once you understand that, you realize that it's inevitable that CI would predict the rise of Donald Trump. I'm not the suggesting place. we create an enemies list yeah. of VCs who took shots at David for backing Michael's Trump an prediction. Enemies list? Yeah, what would be the point? Uh, okay, what, what about a Slack channel? So if we need to pull a list like that together, Slack it's channel. all there. Oh, so like an enemies channel? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay. I like this. Okay, oh. guys, I really don't think we need yeah, to Rose. be... Uh, I want Mike Maples on that enemies channel thing. You got it. So, like I was saying, I don't think there's any harm in having an actionable database of people who took shots at David. Wait, 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 wait. I don't understand. I just... Uh, Rhodes, get, uh, get Lori to track down Furtick, every number, all platforms. One of Silicon Valley's brightest stars, Michael Furtick, shocks the international business community by walking away not only from his own company, but from innovation entirely. ...about what just happened. But of course, the narrative has never really been about me. All of my contributions have always been about you and for you. You, the people of Earth, so far, have been my boss, my employer. I've always answered to you, only to you, 
I don't think that we've seen the kind of challenge that we'll see going forward here. This could be like the Dark Ages. This could be hundreds of years before we emerge from this. We've been talking a lot about whether or not Silicon Valley itself is Silicon Valley anymore. I am a bit worried about David Cowan because they've worked together for a long time. Now that Michael's retired, you know, what's David gonna do? What does Garfunkel do when Simon moves on? What is he qualified to do?